So there's a lot of musicians in the world. That may seem like a, a really obvious statement. Uh, no shit, there's a lot of musicians in the world. But when you really think about it, it's actually an interesting idea. There are probably musicians all over your neighborhood or apartment complex or the forest that you live in. You yourself might be a musician. I know most of my subscribers are. You guys make some pretty good stuff. You should be proud because you are making art. The best thing about art is that anyone, and I mean anyone, can make it. The world likes to tell us that the art we make has to be a certain way, but that's really not true. There is no such thing as bad art, only art that isn't appreciated. There is someone out there for every piece of art, and sometimes that person might just be you. So why am I saying this? Well, if anyone can make art who says they need formal training, or any training at all. That's right. Today we're talking about outsider music, the ultimate genre of free expression. Before we get into this video, I want you to know that I'm approaching this from the lens of someone experiencing what I consider to be art. Some of this stuff isn't what you would consider normal. In fact, none of it is. But I don't want the takeaway from this video to be, look at this weirdo making weird music. Now, that doesn't mean the music isn't weird. Believe me, some of it is pretty weird. But that's not a bad thing. At the end of the day, all art is equal. And though you may not like some of some or any of these artists, hell, even I don't fully unironically enjoy some of this stuff, it still has value and should not be seen as something solely used to poke fun at. Remember, at the end of these day, the day, these are all people, just like you and me, and that even if they're different, they still deserve respect. It's fine to laugh. A lot of these people have at least some sense of humor, but don't discount them as people just because they made something considered wacky. Kidding. We're gonna start this one off with a blast. A fire blast, a flare, maybe even a fusion flare. That's right, I'm talking about Justin RPG. Justin RPG is an iconic character on the internet. Essentially, Justin RPG is the Chad to the Virgin Chris Chan. Justin RPG was originally thought to be a troll, just a guy on the internet who parried the stranger side of the Pokemon fandom. But but he's real. He's very real. Justin RPG is a man who is legally married to the Pokemon Russia Ram. He is <laughs> very open about his fetishes, of which he has many, but I will not shame him for that. Being brave enough to openly say that you fantasize about being eaten by your giant dragon wife and swimming around in her stomach acid with a straight face, publicly, to thousands of people online, it takes guts. Justin RPG is a true alpha male. I don't think he's done anything wrong other than being cringe, so please don't bully the guy. I mean, he can take it, but he doesn't deserve it just because he has interests that deviate from the norm. It's fine to laugh, but Justin RPG definitely has a sense of humor. There is some form of joking in some of his posts, I, I hope, but we all know the man. What about his music? Well. Justin has made numerous songs that are fucking awesome classics. Classics like I Love Russia Ram. I love Russia Ram. I love Russia Ram. And Dark Jolteon. Are true works of art. If you want one of his joke songs, listen to his track, I Hate Windows Vista Tonight, a parody of In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. The joke being that Windows Vista is bad. And hey, it's almost Christmas. Christmas is just a week away. So what better to way to celebrate than with the 12 legendary Pokemon of Christmas? On the first day of Christmas, the book my master sent to me. Street went under the tree. On the second day of Christmas, the book my master sent to me. Two legends networks and a sweet coat under a tree. 
The background of the music of these songs is hard to ignore. Justin seems to have found that the most interesting MIDI files that he could have used to match his lyrical prowess. The instruments he uses seem to be from some kind of video game sound font. For his parody tracks, he uses the original instrumentals, but there are uh, these are few and far between between his, in his world of surreal MIDI files. Justin RPG is a genuinely very creative person. The things he makes, while being very different, have some value. Some of it is funny, and that's okay. I don't think Justin minds being laughed at sometimes. But remember, he's a person. Don't, like, harass this guy just because he got teleported. I mean, he already has a hard enough life being teleported by Magic Man into his wife's bladder and having to slowly drown in her piss, all right? That's hard. Don't make his life any harder, okay? Thank you. Okay, so where my enjoyment of Justin RPG's work is mostly ironic, the rest of these artists are in the ter territory of complete unironic enjoyment. I actually enjoy the work of all of these artists, and I will give my case for each one. Let's start with Daniel Johnston. Daniel Johnston is probably the most accessible outsider artist that we'll discuss today. Daniel was born in 1961 and was one of the first outsider artists to reach a wide audience. In the 80s, he began giving away tapes with his albums on them to spread the word about his work. But certain types of people who found it became really attached to it. One of those people being Kurt Cobain of Nirvana fame, who was the one to spread the word about Daniel. Daniel Johnston has some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard contained within his discography. While he had severe bipolar disorder and certainly had a dark side to his music, it's some of the most pure expression of emotion that exists in the music world. There's a sense that Daniel is spouting his feelings into an open void, not caring about who hears. The idealized form of art that rarely shows itself, not made for money or anything, just because he has to make it. When I first learned of Daniel Johnston, it was three years ago. I remember that day, all I listened to were his first couple albums. I was entranced. Tragically, only a few months later, on September 11th, 2019, Daniel passed away from a heart attack. It's a really strange feeling that you get when an artist you adore the art of dies. It's sad, obviously. But something about Daniel's music makes it feel so personal. And all the more tragic that he's dead. Whenever I'm sad and need something to cheer me up, instead of wallowing, I turn to Daniel Johnston. I highly recommend his music. It feels like something that everyone needs in their lives. This next artist has a place in my life that I don't think I'll ever fully get over. I don't know when I heard the song for the first time. It was something that existed in my subconscious, perhaps from birth. But back in 2019, I had a strange moment one day where I lost control of myself and started shouting, rock and roll McDonald's over and over again and laughing. It was like a divine will had told me that I needed to do more research on Wesley Lillis. Wesley Lillis was an artist who was definitely a bit of a comedian. He had a sense of humor that I feel would really be appreciated in this modern era of shitposting. Wesley is a very interesting person. That's for sure. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia in 1989 after a few horrible things happened to him, leading to his temporary commitment to an institution. But despite his schizophrenia, he was able to live the life of an artist. Before he started making music, he would sketch intricate and detailed drawings of the Chicago streets, most of the time from memory. He would sell these on the streets to make most of his money. He was a genius, that's for sure. He began making music in the 90s with the band The Wesley Willis Fiasco, which I believe that most fans of punk rock type stuff will enjoy despite the admittedly strange style of Wesley's vocals.
He doesn't really sing, it's more of a kind of chant-like yelling, like a preacher on the side of the road trying to save the sinners of the world. But where the majority of his career truly exists is in his solo material. And the thing that's common with outsider artists is that they either have a shit ton of work or one album. Wesley Willis has a partial discography on Wikipedia of 47 albums. Almost every outsider artist has this strange compulsion to their art. Like I said, either making a ridiculous amount of albums or only ever making one out of some random stroke of inspiration. Wesley's music is kind of hard to get into. A lot of it is comedic in nature, on purpose. And through listening to a lot of Wesley's work, I can tell that we have a very similar sense of humor. Songs like The Chicken Cow, which describes a beast that only comes out when it's 25 degrees below zero and that has killed as many as 100,000 people by stabbing them in the ass with a shard of glass. Cow. This beast killed as many as 100,000 people. Its wings can flap like a bird. It can break a glass. It can also stab you in the ass. The chicken cow, the chicken cow, the chicken cow, the chicken Many of his less humorous songs are named after events or people. These are typically info dumps about the event or person that, or occasionally it can be personal experiences with the person that Wesley had. But some of Wesley's songs are genuinely emotional. The song Chronic Schizophrenia is really sad. Despite having the same instrumental as I Whooped Batman's Ass, this isn't a joke. Willis stated in the documentary The King of Rock and Roll that his occasionally very vulgar lyrics were used to gross out his schizophrenic demons so they would leave him alone. Willis had a hard life, but despite his struggles both mentally and physically, he still made a huge impact with many genuine fans like myself. He died tragically of chronic myeloid leukemia at the young age of 40. And while he made a lot of music, even up to his death, there was probably a lot more he could have made. Hopefully, he's at peace now. So an artist that I've known about for years, but have never gotten the chance to talk about until today, would be Kingo Yuchi. Kingo Yuchi is a guy who we know nothing about. There's one picture of him on the cover of his album, Unugami to Kachiku, but there are no live performances or anything like that. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia article, and he's, it's not like he's a new artist. He's been making music since at least 1994. His music is creepy as hell, and I mean that literally. It sounds like something you would hear in a Japanese horror movie when the protagonists chant to open a gate to hell. He sings in this very unsettling tone that sounds like he's in great pain, making the lyrics unintelligible even if I did speak Japanese. Just as his strange and tortured vocals is the, his guitar, which sounds like it's never been tuned in its entire existence. This music is great. I know that sounds like a ridiculous statement, but I'm serious. It's so uncanny and creepy that it loops around to sound good in my ears. Honestly, it's reminiscent of Silencer or Psychonaut 4. And I'm not joking. If the guitar were distorted, this would be some high-quality DSBM. But that may also take away from the uniqueness of the music. I'd recommend checking out Inugami no Kachiku, or Tokachiku if you're a fan of black metal. I'm not saying it's black metal, mind you, but I think that there is definitely quite a bit of overlap here that fans will appreciate if they have a certain palette, as I do.
So there's one more group that I want to talk about in this video. A group that is shrouded in mystery. They don't care what music is supposed to sound like. They're a collective that exists in a void that creates art unlike that which most people could dream of. They're also one of my favorite bands. The Residents are a band who have existed for almost 50 years. Their first release being in 1972 titled Santa Dog. Santa dogs at Jesus' feet, the Santa dogs at Jesus' feet, the Santa dogs at Jesus' feet, the there's no presence, there's no presence in the future. In the future. They have released over 60 studio albums and are still making music to this day. But in the 50 years since their creation, no one knows who the residents are other than the residents. People from George Harrison to Les Claypool have been accused of being members, but that's doubtful. I personally like to imagine that the residents are not people. Well, I mean they are people, but they exist beyond their music. Their music is the only thing that they are. They, they, they have this almost eclectic manner of interacting with the world, that the only way that they can get out anything is because of their music. I personally enjoy their work in the 70s the most, but I enjoy all of their work. But albums like Duck Stab and Not Available, to me, are some of the most compellingly outlandish albums I've ever gotten to hear. The, Re the Residents are a deep enough rabbit hole to get their own video one day. Which they will, one day. Believe me. But I want to end with them to make one point. Art can be anything. If you make something that no one likes at first, it doesn't matter, as long as you like it. The Residents are a band some people fucking hate. When you look them up on YouTube, there are videos claiming that they made the worst album of all time. But they still make music. Eventually someone will find your art, and someone will love it. It doesn't matter if you follow conventions, it doesn't matter if you follow the rules. As long as you're making something that you enjoy, that's all that matters. And the residents are the perfect example of that. So, for now, that's all I have to say about this topic. As always, thank you for watching this far, if you made it this far. And if you enjoyed the video, consider liking or commenting or subscribing. I'm starting to work on my 50 subscriber special as soon as this video is done, so that should be fun. Originally, this was going to be a video about a game called Nightmare Temptation Academy. But uh, I realized I probably couldn't talk about that game and say what I wanted to say about it without getting several terms of service violations, so that probably won't have ever happen, at least for a while. Thank you all for continuing to watch my stuff, and join me next time for my 50 subscriber special, unless it takes me longer to work on it, in which case there will be a video between this and that video. But there will be a video next week. Probably. Unless something horrible happens. Which it might. You know, I could get struck by lightning, like, today. While sitting in my room editing this video. And then there wouldn't be any more videos. But that's not gonna happen, so... See you next week.